Hello again. So here um, on the second day of this assignment, the uh, 25 content page or whatever, um, I'm going to go through the first one um, that you probably hopefully have already tried. Um, so I can you can check to make sure everything is the way it should or looks the way it should on your on your results. All right. So let's do the usual here and do a table of values for basically minus 10 to 10, but let's start in the middle, see what we see what we find. And so we have our X and our Y, our equation is Y equals X squared plus three X minus seven. And so we're gonna put the, make the first one really easily by just saying, okay, well, those are all gone. So we just have a minus seven. Okay, so that one's super easy. Um, and then, <clears throat> I'll leave that one as a record this time. I'm going to clone that thing, and we'll go and do another calculation. So let's do for x equals, let's do, maybe I'll show in detail a different one this time, than the detail for a 1. So let's go 1, 2, 3. Let's do for 3. So we're going to set x equal to 3. And so now we're going to have y equals the 3 squared plus the 3 times the 3 minus the 7. So 3 squared is 9, and that 3 times 3 is also 9, and take away 7. And so we're going to have 9 take away 7 would be 2, 9 plus 2 is 11. Okay, so you can tell it at 3 we've got an 11. All right, so let's work our way back between things here. Let's get this one ready to go here, and let's just do the quicker way now. Um, if we were to do the quicker way, we're just going to say, okay, for 1, we're just going to get 1 squared is 1, times 1 is 3, take away 7. So uh, 4, take away 7 would be negative 3. Right? And if you wanted to make sure on things, of course, you could just be more careful and have your, <clears throat> your uh, 1 plus 3 take away 7 very carefully to make sure you have the right numbers, right? So don't have to be a number whiz. Um, so minus 3 there. And then another one, let's do 2. So 2 squared is 4. Um, 2 times 3 is 6. And take away 7. So we've got a 6 take away a 7. So we have a negative 1. Negative 1 take away from the 4 is going to be 3. So we've got a positive 3. And um, let's go the other way and uh, see what we find. Let's try a negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, and so on. <clears throat> so for a negative 1, we're going to have 1, negative 1 squared is 1. Uh, negative 1 times 3 is a minus 3. And we have a minus 7, so we have a negative 10 plus 1, so we have a negative 9. negative 9, and then the negative 2, go back to green or something, negative 2 would be a 4, and we're doing minus 6 minus a 7, so we have a negative 13, but I'll just go ahead and do this one this way. So we have 4, take away 6, take away 7, gives us negative 9 again, right? Uh, yeah, I guess so. Negative 9. I might double check things in a little bit here. Um, but that might be our... I think I might have done something wrong there. Double check here. The 1, negative 1 squared is 1. Negative 1 is negative 3. What's negative? 7, 10. This one with the 2 squared is 4. The negative 1 goes in. It's a negative 6. Yeah, I guess so. Um, it just seems weird so far looking at the numbers, but <clears throat> that can happen until you graph it. So let's keep going. Uh, we have a negative 3. So negative 3 squared is 9. Negative 3 times positive 3 is a negative 9. So those are gone. So we just have a, a minus 7. We have a minus 7. 
and blue in here. And start graphing that, see what happens. All right, so at zero, we have minus seven. And at one, we got negative three. And at two, we have three. Three, we have 11, so I could go one above there. Let's work backwards from the zero now, the minus one, minus nine. And the minus two, minus nine. And the minus three at minus seven. Kind of start to predict now what the another number would be. It seemed odd at the time, um, having the two negative nines, but it'll make sense in a second when we look at how this works out. This one's supposed to be there. Um, right, negative three, negative seven, yep. And then so if you did the calculus for negative four, you probably guessed it would be the same number as this one, right? The symmetry on either side like that. Um, so that would be the uh, three, right? Negative nine, seven, negative three. Negative three, that is. Yep, good. So that's looking good. And then if we kept going, you'd be able to get the, the corresponding uh, matching symmetry one there and the matching symmetry one there if you wanted to keep going. But we're getting a, a curve here, a quadratic. Looks like this and like this. And notice that we're kind of missing this little in between here, right? That and that bottom piece. So the vertex actually is in between here. The vertex is kind of missing. Okay. Um, yeah, things are symmetrical here and so on. You can kind of tell the vertex is going to be at negative uh, 1.5. Um, so negative 1.5, and then you could calculate that number if you want. But really, at this point, we just have an estimate from the graph, and that's and that's fine. It's just the regular table of values. But if you wanted to be more thorough, you could do that, right? So if we did that, we'd have the the one negative 1.5 squared. So 1.5 squared. Gives us 2.25. This is for x equals negative 1.5 for the vertex. And um, we'd have a 3 times a negative 1.5. So 3 times 1.5. I want to have a negative answer, of course. Negative 4.5. And then the minus 7. So let's get those numbers. We've got the 2.25. Take away 4.5. Take away seven gives an answer of negative nine point two five. Okay, so that's negative nine point two five, and we can even tell the vertex value now. So nine point two five, um, and so you can tell my bottom that I added in there was sort of a little bit too deep. It's more like you know it's pretty flat there, nine point two five, which looks pretty good, doesn't it? Right, so the middle number there is your vertex. When we go to do all the properties, we have our vertex and we have our negative 1.5 and our negative 9.25 labeled nicely. Um, so then we have things like we can tell that's the minimum value of y equals negative 9.25. Uh, we have the axis symmetry. Right, axis symmetry is x equals negative 1.5. Um, we've got what else opens up, obviously. And we have a uh, y intercept that we can see right here. That y intercept was when x equals 0, so it's negative 7. And we have x-intercepts as well that we'd be estimating from this graph. So estimating about there and there, it's prob probably not actually negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? But we have um, x-intercepts of at least approximately, you know, x is approximately negative 5. And x is approximately, I don't know, 1.7 or something. 
And we'll be able to do better than that later on, but for now, this is where we're at. We just graph it and, and see what happens. Um, if we wanted to solve, like figure out mathematically those values, those real, what the values really are, we'd have to set this equal to zero and then solve for x. And so that's gonna come later on in this course, um, but for now, we're not just not there yet. Okay, so I'll say solve for x later to get these guys up here, right? To get those zeros. So that's what we talked about, about those are your zeros. Um, yeah, those are your solutions or your roots or your x-intercepts. All right, so that's uh, part A of that practice assignment worked out for you in case you needed some help. Hope that does uh, help you get on your way to being able to do the rest of them just as uh, thoroughly. All right. That's it.